Welcome to Primetime Crime Podcast. I am your host, Kylie, and in this podcast, we are going to deep dive into some lesser known unsolved true crime cases from missing persons to unsolved homicides. This is the place where we are going to unpack it all, research it all, talk about it all, and try to bring justice to these families after all of these years. We are going to take it one story at a time, one case at a time, and hopefully justice will be ours. Welcome to the What the Fuck is That podcast, where we ask the age-old question of what the fuck is that? I'm your host, Jess. I'm Jen. Just kidding, it's actually just me, Jess. We had a little mix-up with some audio and some issues with another episode, and so we did this episode, but then we realized we don't have an opener recorded for this. So here's some a little behind-the-scenes take of Jen and I setting up for an episode. Enjoy! I know. Hold okay. On. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, then why did I give the fucking clip already? Maybe I wanted to add a little flair. I don't know. We're 30 episodes in. You could have added flair earlier. Uh, Let me know before you start because I got to give us another clap now. I'm looking for a man in finance. Trust fun. Six five blue eyes. Finance. Okay. Ready? Trust fun. Six five blue eyes. Yes. <laughs> looking for a man. Looking for a man. Get okay, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop with that stupid laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh okay. god, this is the shit that Patreon gets. <laughs> Looking for a man and fun. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> You're gonna get it stuck in my head. Good, because now it'll be all over your for you page now that I've played it for you and sung it all day. Fuck off. You're welcome. Fuck off. Okay. Okay. Go. Ow. Ow. I looked away for two seconds and my hands went all willy nilly. <laughs> Okay, I got it for real life this time, okay? <laughs> you got it for real Z's? I got it for real life. <laughs> for real life. Real life. <laughs> okay, go. We're talking about a ghost. Can you stop laughing now? <laughs> it's not a ghost, it's a witch. The f- what if what fucking ever? <laughs> yeah, so that was that. Um if you like whatever the fuck this is, be sure to head over to our Instagram. Our Instagram is WTF is that pod. Over there, you'll find the link to our link tree, which has all of the places to listen to us. It also has the forum for our campfire stories, as well as our Amazon wish list and the link to our Patreon. If you go to the link that has the spots for all the places to listen to us, and then you like and review us there, that would be great because then it lets all of the listening gods know that you love us and you love our stuff. Also, while you're over there, just like leave a review so other people can know what's going on here. As always, the very best way to help us grow is just by word of mouth. So if you're rushing to complete a project and it's just not going your way and you just need to vent to someone, you put on WTF is that pod and you relax a little bit and then you post it on your social media of choice about how you were rushing to finish and we just got you through that. We would much appreciate it. And with that, let's get into this week's episode. Hey, Jess. Hey, Jen. Have you ever heard of Lala Chusa? The fuck is Lala Chusa? I'm so glad you have no idea. Let's go ahead and dive into this. I mean, like, I have a little bit I of know an you idea do. because, like, you're all about that bitch. But you know what? I probably shouldn't call her a bitch. She's probably no. going to come for me now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I fucked up, eh, hey, Ron? I fucked up. Okay, see, like, your obsession with Mothman is essentially... My obsession with La Lechuza. Which, side note, my birthday was a little bit ago now. A little bit ago. And my stepdad got me a Mothman shirt 
from Point Pleasant. Yeah. He ordered it. And he got me a little Mothman stuffy who now sits and lives in my car. And he's so cute. And my children keep calling him Moth Boy because it bothers me. <laughs> And my four-year-old knows it. She'll go, oh, look at Moth Boy up there. I'm like, you know what, four-year-old? <laughs> I'm surprised your partner hasn't gotten you the Build-A-Bear version yet. Oh, I told him that we are going to Build-A-Bear. Of He's course. aware. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was going to say, I'm surprised he has not gotten that for you yet. But I can I can see where you would want to go and, like, build your Mothman. Oh, fuck yeah. I want to put a creepy voice in it. <laughs> I want to put a creepy voice in it and, like, a bedazzled jacket. Oh, my God. <laughs> of course you would. Well, anyways, this is, like, your obsession is mine. They How... are equivalent. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Um, I did an entire, like, English presentation project when we were in eighth grade on this. Oh, Do you I remember? remember vividly. Like, this was when we had first become friends. <laughs> yeah. And it was one of the things that, like, made us friends. Because you're like, let me info dump to you on this special interest that I have. And I'm like, yes, give it all to me. Okay, I'm because autistic. It opened up- okay, but also, <laughs> it opened up the floodgates because I love a deep dive. You do. Anyone who knows me knows I love a deep dive. I and think so that's the best like, part. she's like, let me give you all this information. I'm like, fuck yes, tell me all of it. I think that's the best part is, like... You have ADHD, I have autism, where we both hyperfixate on things, and sometimes it'll change, sometimes it's something that has been with us for the last 15 years, like La Lechuza <laughs> or Mothman. <laughs> um, yeah, this definitely, I think this was part of our foundation of our friendship, for sure, um, because, so, backstory, what happened was, in eighth grade, my English teacher ended up going on maternity leave and we were left with this substitute. What would I do with substitutes, babe? Well, the same thing that any eighth grader does. It's just fuck with them. Exactly. I would make his life miserable, but honestly, he ended up being a really great guy. Yeah. Like, he kind of fucked with him for no reason. He was actually pretty awesome. Yeah. And he so, was... like when I met him, I'm like, you're being kind of a cunt. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's where like I toned it down, but also cause so, I forgot what this project even was, but it was supposed to be on, like, a lore or a legend, um, and I ended up doing it on two topics, in all actuality, because... Yeah, because I was going to say, didn't you have to have special permission to yeah. do the project you were going to do? Yeah, because I wanted... So, I wanted my project to be on La Lechuza. However, the policy or like the grading rubric or whatever was not going around that it had to be like an english or something legend it was very specific type of legend yeah i forgot what it As was it has to be because it's for you know an english class exactly you know okay i think fair. there had to be like a literature or something something attached. or another um but i ended up finding what is essentially an equivalent of an american version um of la lechuza where it's just simply the Owl Man. And we'll get into that a little later. I remember um, when you found this and you were so hyped. You're like, I can do it now! Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I found that little piece that I needed to put it all together. And I'm pretty sure my mother still has that, like, storyboard panel. Oh, really? <laughs> poster that I had to present this thing. I'm pretty sure my mother still has it some I just, somewhere. I love a loophole. Yeah. I love a loophole. Yeah. So, um... This is a story that I've been looking forward to doing for a really long time. This is one of the ones that as soon as we talked about doing the podcast, I'm like, well, clearly this will be one of your topics. Yes. I already know that. Yeah. And honestly, so right now, going through a lot personally, having to do a lot for school, stuff like that, um, I didn't deep dive into this research like I should have. Um, so I might revamp it later on. Um, we might redo this topic and I'll go like into a full deep dive. But that of... would also be hours long. Yes. But I mean, I could, I could cut it down to an hour. I could do it. Yeah. I could do it. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, but it would be like 
a more research topic and probably do the comparison of Lala Chusa and the Owl Man. Ooh, that would be cool. That would be a good way to revamp it because then you could actually pull it in and pull in other stuff. Exactly. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of keep it a little basic uh, for this episode. And then later on, we can go into a little more detail and a little more history. And then I'll compare it to the Owl Man. Love it. Cool. Alrighty. So... First of all, we're going to go into the background and, like, the roots of all of this, right? Gotcha. Um, La Lechuza is a blend of indigenous beliefs and Spanish colonial influences. The legend predominantly originates from Mexico and parts of Texas. La Lechuza is often depicted as a witch who transforms into a giant owl, sometimes with the face of an old woman, sometimes with the face of an owl. This dual nature embodies fear and mystery. Yeah, so, like, wait. Yeah. So giant owl body with woman face or with owl face? Exactly. Giant owl face, fine. (laughs) Giant old lady face, problem. I have a problem (laughs) with that one. Giant owl I can live with. So, like, sometimes... Giant owl with a lady face. Mm. So sometimes she's depicted as, like, this... Like, this blend of owl and old woman, it she'll have, like, her old woman face on, like, essentially the body of an owl, but her nose and, like, mouth will be, like, a beak, like an owl. I feel like you were trying to make it better, and you made it worse. (laughs) I don't... So... (laughs) I don't think I was trying to go either which way. I'm just trying to tell you how some people have depicted her. Thinks I hate it. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't like things with things that they shouldn't be. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's a little creepy. <laughs> yeah. So before Spanish colonization, hmm. not the colonizers. <laughs> Colonization. Oh no. Colonialization. There we go. Is that how you that's how you say it, right? Say it again. Colonialization. I feel like you're adding an extra syllable in there. Colonization. No. Colonialization. No. (laughs) That's how you just said it. Colonialization. That's how I said it. Colonialization. Okay. Let's move on. (laughs) I can't hear this word anymore. Sure, fuck it, why not? You're right, whatever. Before the Spanish colony. Yeah. (laughs) Before those bastards came in. (laughs) So before the Spanish migrated, uh, many indigenous cultures revered, no, revered. You just had a little tongue tie going on today. Oh yeah, today we're, we're having issues. Okay. Before Spanish colonization, many indigenous cultures revered and feared owls as messengers of the dead and omens of death. Good job. Also, I feel like that's a very common, like, I don't like using native, but like native indigenous people thing. Yeah. Is like owls are a big part of the culture, which are like loved and to be like afraid of. Because, like, owls are so cute, but also they'll fuck you up. They're like otters. Yeah. Like, otters are so cute, they'll murder you. They will, yeah. Otters don't give a shit. It's, um, what is it? Like, those animation of, like, furry, cute, little, happy animals, Mm -hmm. and then immediately the, like, red eyes, sharp razor claws and teeth. Oh, like koalas. (laughs) Koalas are another one. They are. You never think that those little bastards could be what they are. No. Well, I mean, like, there's a whole dive going on a different path. Australian urban legend about drop bears. They're yeah. essentially just koalas. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I'll cover all of them at some point. I'm sure you will. That might be its own episode. Who knows? <laughs> Fuck it. Anyways, back to this one. Um, Yeah, owls are cool and scary. Yep. And can also be cute and cuddly. Honestly, I've always been kind of scared of owls. Probably because of La Lechuza. Probably. Also, have you seen the, like, things are in your teeth. These are talons. (laughs) 
I wish we had. <laughs> I wish we had video set up already because if only y'all could see <laughs> the gesture Jess is continuing to make to get to the word that she needs. There's so many times where I do the gesture because I, in my head, can picture it. And I think <laughs> if I just gesture it enough, it'll come to me. Or, like, she'll expect me to know what she's thinking. I'll say a backwards way of saying it, and then I'll look at her like, you know, and she'll be like, I don't know, actually. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't get what you're putting down. You just down. made two and two make seven. What are you talking about? Exactly. Have no idea. <laughs> I'm looking for a man in finance. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anywho... With the arrival of Spanish colonizers introducing new elements to the legend, they blended witchcraft fears with indigenous owl symbolism. Which, again, is just a super common thing. People from other cultures came in and everything just kind of bled together in this mod podge of legend. Yeah. With some, like, weird religious aspect thrown in a lot of the times exactly and i mean there's even uh similar creatures or like similar stories or lore in like the slavic and greek culture showing a universal fear of like owl-like creatures which i'm sure because isn't the saying that like every story has already been told everyone's just telling it a slightly different way yeah that's so, essentially what folklore is yeah I just, people are like, oh, people have always been connected. It's like, no, people have always just been trying to explain the same weird shit and came to the same conclusions. So, and that's, okay, you're probably going to cut this out, but it's also the same thing of, like, where some of the timeline in the Bible actually makes sense. Because everyone used to be able to speak the same language until the day that the, uh... I forgot, like, the whole parable of it. Like, the wall came down, like, everything like that. People, like, started being like, well, you can't separate us or, like, you can't. Defying. Anyways, um, that's when God made up seven different languages. I believe it's seven. Interesting. Because then um, it also brings to, like, the idea of, like, okay, well, we also, at one point, we're all one continent. Exactly. And then the further people got apart from each other, like, languages changed. Exactly. So it's like, okay, well, some of that starts to make sense of, like, the history and the Bible because if, and then also, like, Pangea, yeah, um, where it's like, okay, maybe we did all speak the same language at one point. Maybe humans did defy god to the point or someone to the point where it was like no now you can't understand each other and you're... or again it's just like a way to explain history yeah which i too. feel like a lot of those stories are it's just like here's a parabolic way yeah to explain what happened yeah and so it's like okay so that makes sense of how one culture has some of the same stories because it's like okay well what if that story really was true where it's like everyone did speak something or the same at one point and then all of a sudden they can't so then that's why all the stories yeah so then they start they start taking those stories to those who still can understand each other and then they just take those stories that they can still understand each other and like it just keeps spreading even though at one point everybody used to be able to understand each other well and it's the same thing with like word of mouth like a story is going to change and evolve depending on who says it and how many times it's said and translated and all that good stuff yeah so I mean, it makes sense that there's multiple different uh, encounters or, like, legends yeah, around. versions. Yeah, around, uh, I guess you would call her a cryptid. I'd say an urban legend more than anything. Really? Yeah, because cryptids are usually more animal-based. Oh, I mean, she I is know- half animal, babe. Well, I mean, but isn't her story, she's, like, based on more human Yes and no. Okay. So we'll get to there. We'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. Because my thinking is like cryptids are always animal. They don't have like a background story. Okay. Like Bigfoot was always Bigfoot. Mothman was always Mothman. That's fair. So I'd say more urban legend. I feel like she's kind of a cross between an urban legend and a cryptid. I'd go with that. 
Okay. I'd say that. Like, um, flesh pedestrians. Yeah. It's kind of in the same realm as, like, a flesh pedestrian. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we're going to get into, like, the characteristics and the tales of La Lechuza. So, she's typically described as a massive owl, sometimes hitting up to seven feet tall with like we said earlier, a woman's face or uh, an owl face or a mixture of the both and piercing eyes. Most of the time, piercing red eyes. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh, just that like gazing straight down at you? No, thank you. I wonder, so if she's half, like if she's supposed to be half owl, half woman, can she turn her head 360 like an owl can? Even if she's still like her face still looks like woman. That's enough out of you. <laughs> Go on. You don't have these kinds of thoughts? Now I do. <laughs> and I will be thinking about it as I'm trying to fall asleep tonight. So thank you for that one. You're welcome. I'll make sure to text it to you. Remind you. Oh, what a guy. <laughs> Fuck you. Boom. <laughs> In some areas, so whether it being, like, Texas or Mexico, because that's typically where she's seen a lot, is either Mexico or Texas or along the border of the two. Mm -hmm. Um, It depends on the area. La Lechuza has been described as more bird-like features, emphasizing her owl nature. Now we're going to get into the stories of the history of, like, how she became La Lechuza. Dun, dun, dun. One popular story involves a woman who was wronged by her village, transforming into La Lechuza to seek vengeance. The fuck did her village do? That seems dramatic. (laughs) So, to go a little deeper into that one, that one was more of they accused her of witchcraft, even though she was just a simple old lady. Oh, so you mean little literally everyone who was accused of witchcraft exactly okay cool however she ended up i can't remember if they actually did go and kill her um and she came back as la lechuza because she you know swore vengeance against them because she's like fuck you you want me to be a villain or no hold on what's the line she went fuck you you want me to be the bad guy now i'm the bad guy exactly um, and because an owl was nearby when she was put to death, that's what she came back as. Woof. I mean, like, get it, girl. <laughs> Fucking haunt their asses, but also woof. And the story, so I'm going to tell you all the story that I was told as a child. Um, basically, it's kind of along the same lines, but she was a bruja. Which explain for people who doesn't know, who aren't in our circle, who don't know what that means. This is true. Uh, So a bruja is witch in Spanish. Um, However, like... And it's a very particular type of magic. It's like a cultural Yeah, I was about to say, it's kind of like American witchcraft, but for Spanish, like Hispanics um, and Latinos. Yeah. it is very culture based. Like one of the trendy things that's like bruja magic is like the egg cleanse. Exactly. Because I know that's been getting big on TikTok. I hate that that's becoming so big on TikTok because it's not meant to be done by everybody. No, it's not. Like I was taught, but I was also taught by my grandmother who is an actual bruja or was. Um, and my family will confirm she was. Um, you know, she passed down the same things to her daughters, so my mom taught me. Uh, my mom doesn't really believe in brujaria, even though she practices it constantly. Um, she just doesn't realize it. Um, but yeah, so this is something that's actually passed down from daughter to daughter. It's rarely ever passed down to men. Um... That I've noticed. Yeah. My uncles know some. uh, Well, my uncle, I should say. I have one left. Probably just like (laughs) in passing from things, though. Not like full on taught, I would think. 
Yeah. Um, there were certain things that they were taught. Um, but that's also my grandma just being my grandma. And I'm also sure, or I'm also pretty sure that it'd be, like, more, like, protection stuff. Yeah. And less of everything else. Yeah, no, it definitely was more protection. Um, but again, like I said, that's just my grandma being my grandma. Not every, uh, bruja does that, where she'll teach her sons something. Um, so my grandmother actually told me this story, where it's not that far off of, uh, the woman being a witch or a bruja and uh she actually in this story that i was told what disappeared um after being hurt so she was like beaten and physically threatened by the village and she ended up just disappearing like like what is what is the word that i'm looking for um essentially like promising that she was going to come back for like those who hurt her and their children oh she left with a vengeance like oh yeah um but not just that but that she also like would make others so it's not just one lechusa like a woman scorned can become a lechusa Oh, shit. Okay, I thought that was... I thought it was, like, a singular thing. No, like, in in our culture, or, like, at least what I was taught and what I was... The stories that I was told, Mm -hmm. a woman scorned, um, especially physically, um, can become a lechuza. Is that why there's so many different origin stories? Possibly. Because it's, like, that whole idea of a scorned woman. Because I know the one that I heard was, like... She was supposed to marry this, like, Spanish soldier, and then oh, never he that ended up, like, leaving her for another woman in another village, and then she, like... Yeah, it's quite possible that yeah. that's why. It's very quite possible. Um, there's, from what I've learned and from what I've known my whole life is there's not just one. There's multiples out there. Ooh. Yeah. That makes and, it worse. <laughs> and the thing is, is that once they become a lechusa, like, they're immortal. Oh, shit. Like, they stay around for eternity. I wonder what the vetting process for that is. Or, uh-huh. like, you know, like, if another lechusa has to, like, see the like wrongdoings be done and then like probably like, but yeah, they also have to be it. that and they probably also have to be a practicing bruja well i think that would be like a big one of it yeah well i mean it's kind of declining now so yeah interesting interesting yeah huh. but that's so that's what i was taught and that's the story that i was always told um however i was also told that any time you saw an owl, it means you were marked for death. That's another indigenous person thing. Because it's the same with, like, my people. Yeah. Or, like, death was coming. Or, like, something bad was going to happen. It's an omen type yeah. thing. It's a foreseen future omen. But we were also, like, warned as children, too. Because we were told that if we misbehaved, like, La Lechusa was going to be at our bed. Like, at the foot of our bed. Ooh, all seven feet of her and everything. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I honestly wholeheartedly believed it. So, I wasn't about to cross my grandmother. <laughs> well, I, I think that's, like, a big thing with legends is it's meant to, like, scare children, essentially. But, like, I think that's the reason why... So, I have never seen an owl, like, just randomly in the wild. Really? Really. I have never seen an owl. Like, I have seen owls from, like, zoos or, Uh like, captivity, you know, like, rescues, stuff like that. I have, like, seen them that way, but I have never personally seen an owl, like, just on my way to work or coming home or anything like that. I have never seen an owl. And I, honest to God, think that's for a reason. (laughs) I think you're going to shit yourself the first time you do. Probably. Like, I've heard owls around. Uh Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, shit. And, like, I clean up my act. 
run, get it together. I clean up my Bitch, act. get it together. <laughs> I, like, no lie, I will clean up my act if I hear them, but I've never seen them. Interesting. That's weird. You're a grown-ass adult. <laughs> I am. I am a grown-ass adult, and I've never seen an owl just randomly, like, on a lamppost or on a tree or anything like that. That's wild, and yeah. I can't believe that. Yeah. Like, I 100% believe the stories my grandmother told me were true. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to handle it the first time you see an owl. I don't think so either. Just IRL. I hope I don't. Not until I actually do die. I mean, (laughs) at that point. (laughs) Many tales depict La Lechuza appearing as an omen of death, as we've said, often heard crying outside of homes before tragedy. Ooh. Like crying, like human crying, or like owl crying? I don't know. I need it to be more specific. One's a little less creepy than the other, because like one is just ambient outside noises. One is scary. Yeah. I don't know. What do do you really think one would be scarier than the other? Yes. If I just heard an owl outside my house, I'd be like, yeah, that's where they live. That makes sense. I would be terrified. If I just heard a lady crying outside of my house, yeah, we'd have a fucking problem. And I couldn't find the source of the crying? No, hard pass. I think I'd be more terrified of the owls crying. No, because that's where they live in the outside. (laughs) I mean, fair, but like... Okay, an owl crying during the day... That might be concerning because they're nocturnal. Yeah. Well, not all owls, but yeah. I think most of them. I I said not all. Most, yeah, probably. The ones that you would see flying around, though, would be crying outside of the houses. Like. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think that has to do with culture, too. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Sidetrack. Um, huh. If an owl is... So owls are nocturnal. Uh huh. Would it? Would an owl insomniac just be up during the day? Probably. An insomniac owl just up all hours. Probably, and then it die. From like exhaustion. Humans don't die. If you don't sleep for three days, you die. I didn't say for three days. I just said up during the day, like an insomniac is up at night. I'm just saying. Taking shit to the fucking extreme, Jen. I'm just saying because for me, like insomniac means that you can't like sleep at all. I think it just means that you have a hard time like getting and staying asleep. Oh. I thought you were the medical one here. Uh, not of insomnia it doesn't translate to owls no (laughs) (laughs) maybe human owls but not (laughs) thanks i hate it you're welcome yuckos so like i said earlier about how my grandma would use la lechuza to like scare us into obeying Uh uh-huh it's not just her many Many brujas will use that same story. And many others. My grandmother also used to talk, like, she used to sidetrack, <laughs> uh, sing us a nursery rhyme, like a lullaby. Uh-huh. That would basically say, go to sleep or the big cat will eat you. What is up with, like, murdering <laughs> children? Listen or we will murder you. What? <laughs> that was literally the lullaby that my grandmother would sing to us. Well, it's, like, the same with Krampus, like... Be good or he will take you to hell. Like, yeah. what? I don't know. It was, honestly, that's the one lullaby that I know. And I would probably end up singing to my kids. No! <laughs> don't tell your children that. <laughs> if my grandmother was still, he- was still here, she'd 100% do it for me. No! Um. <laughs> Jesus. Anywho. Uh, but like we said, she often represents fears and anxieties of the community acting as like a cautionary figure. So a warning sign of just like scaring your children into behaving. Which again, I feel like most of these stories and legends are for. Yeah. 
where psychologists have even suggested that these legends are so deep um, and are still around today because they tap into that deep-seated fear of, like, if I misbehave, that this is going to happen, or, like, the unexplainable, or, you know, just, like, any type of little fear. Yeah, just the odd going that's, on. Yeah, that's what it's going to tap into. Well, I mean, because that's a big fear of a lot of people, is just that fear of the unknown in general. Yeah. And especially if just any woman's scorn could become one, that's a lot of unknown going on. Yeah. There's a lot more, like, of that culture and, like, the different lore and the different stories and different things like that. But that's just kind of, like, the basis of what I wanted to go through today. Mm -hmm. And, like I said, it's she's almost always seen as, like, an omen or as, um... I don't want to say, like, because, I mean, omen, warning sign, like... A cautionary tale. Yeah, all of that put together. Um, but these sightings still do happen to this day. And they happen all over South Texas, all over Mexico. Um, I want to say, like, in some different, uh, like, southern states, not just Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, Arizona, New Mexico, even some in California... But I think it's because it's bordering with Mexico. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Um, so that's probably why. But these sightings are still happening to this day. And like I said, I, I, I truly believe that there's more than just one. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it seems like such an interesting thing that it could be multiple. Yeah. And so next time, I'll definitely get a little more into, like, specifics of like if I could figure out like the process of how she turns or um a little more of the history of like the original one if I can the Lechuza vetting process <laughs> <laughs> that and then we'll go into comparison of the owl man because there's an actual American version of it very nice very nice very nice yeah so that was La Lechuza nice the basics basics the the um introduction the broad strokes the oh shit what does m and then that's why we drink call it she calls it like an over or like the brief like an overview of oh yeah basically that's what it was love it very nice yeah 10 out of 10 thanks what did you get on that grade what grade did you get on that i don't even scratch that reverse it (laughs) I don't even What got remember. you that grade? Greg, got you got you that. that. <laughs> what grade you get on that? I don't even remember. I remember you doing pretty okay on it. Yeah. Because you were excited about it, so. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even remember. I know that it's somewhere in my garage, I believe, at home. Unless my mom's already tossed it, which I wouldn't blame her. Yeah, fair. It's 15 years old. <laughs> Ooh, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, she goes... Yeah, you know, I've been divorced 10 years. I was like, no, you haven't. <laughs> Excuse me, what? <laughs> she goes, yeah, I have. She goes, I was like, mom, I've been out of high school 10 years. You have not been divorced 10 years. You've been divorced eight years. You got she's, divorced sophomore year of college. She's like, it feels like it's been fucking forever. <laughs> <laughs> Which, thank fucking God. Yeah. <laughs> but I just was like... No, stop making me feel old. No, you're wrong. (laughs) I was like, there's no way in hell that I was a sophomore in college 10 years ago. Oh, yikes. All right, ready for the disturbing fact? (sighs) Oh. No, but I know you're just going to tell me anyways, so I guess let's fucking go. Let's go, I guess. I guess. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, so we're going to do some more body stuff. Because mm. I know those are your favorites. Mm, yum. So, you know how people get tumors? I'm aware of them, yes. Okay. Well, there are some uh, tumors that are benign, so meaning that they're not cancerous. Yes. Uh, they just start randomly growing out of nowhere. 
weird cluster of cells. But exactly. Yeah, pop off. yeah. Okay, so these tumors are called teratomas. Sounds like pterodactyl. Okay. <laughs> but they're actually spelled with a T, not a P. Lame. I think they should fix that. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, um, so like I said, these tumors are, are benign, so they're non-cancerous. Um, but they are very unique. Okay. Are you ready? No. These tumors um, come from the Greek language translating into monster swelling because these tumors can grow hair, nails, teeth, bones, intestines, and a lot more. It's like Zeus growing another person off his thigh. What the fuck? Yeah. There have been tumors that have been proven to have full vertebra. Shut the fuck like up. Like a full spinal column from uh, C1 all the way to... They like to asexually reproduce? Basically. The fuck? Like these have actually had full blown spinal columns. C1 to all the way to the coccyx. I don't have words. I'm like processing. There have what been you just eyeballs. Said. You shut the fuck up right now. Eyeballs have been found on these tumors. Um, teeth. I'm gonna take away your privilege to this segment. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? Yeah. No. Arms, legs. A nose has been found. Okay, that's enough out of you. <laughs> Anyways, if you like whatever the fuck this is, be sure to head over to our Instagram. Our Instagram is WTF is that pod. Over there, you'll find the link to our link tree. I'm rushing through this because I'm trying to get that image out of my head. Um, if, uh, don't do anything. Just just sit quietly and process what you were just told. Okay, bye. 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 Oh. <laughs>